Welcome to an introductory lecture on the Fourier series and specifically what we will do in this brief introduction is try to become a little bit more familiar with one particular form of the Fourier series. There are many different forms but we'll concentrate in this presentation on the trigonometric form which really means that we are creating these periodic waveforms or signals little x of t out of a collection of sines and cosines and hopefully it will become clear that those sines and cosines are related by a multiple of the fundamental frequency omega naught or these sines and cosines are harmonically related. Let's get started by asking the following question. Why should we really be interested in the Fourier series? The answer is because it actually allows us to intuitively understand what is happening in the following example. Let's look at an example. Suppose that we now have a signal x of t and as a precursor that signal is actually going to be periodic. It's not a sine or a cosine, it's simply a periodic waveform. The sketch may not indicate that but it's trying to be a periodic signal. Suppose we low pass filter that and once we learn a little bit more about Fourier series and periodic waveforms we will be able to immediately determine what y of t should look like based on the filtering characteristics or filtering properties which we now know a little bit more about based on our Bode plot and filter design discussion and how that combines with the periodic signal x of t what does that produce what I've tried to do is actually provide a MATLAB simulation of this to just provide us again with some intuition into what's going on. Suppose x of t is a square wave and specifically let's let the period of that waveform or the first time that it begins repeating its pattern, let's say that that happens every four seconds. The square wave now has a period of four seconds. That's related to our frequency in radians per second by 2 pi over the period capital T which if our capital if our period is 4 seconds then we have an omega naught equal to pi over 2 or approximately one and a half radians per second. Now let's suppose that we put that square wave through a low pass filter that's actually fourth order and we can see that by looking at the denominator and that's s squared times s squared. We can also see the cutoff frequency of that filter by looking at the constant coefficients in each of those quadratic factors in the denominator. Those are four which is really the omega sub c or the cutoff frequency squared meaning our cutoff frequency is two. The output response then is going to look like this dashed curve in this simulation. Our input is the square wave and if I scroll just a little bit to see the axis labels we can see that the period of that waveform is actually four seconds in duration. That's when it starts to repeat the pattern and now after low pass filtering that square wave we are actually presented with a sinusoidal pattern or a sinusoidal signal or waveform. How did that happen or what is actually going on? If we go back to what we know that's what you always want to do if you're looking at new territory and you're trying to make the connection or learn a little bit more. What if x of t was actually a sinusoid? where x might be a sine, it might be a cosine, then we know rather quickly how to find the sinusoidal steady state output from a sine wave or a cosine wave. We know that the output is going to be at the same frequency, we know the amplitude will be, be scaled by the value of the transfer function 
or the magnitude of the transfer function at the frequency of excitation. In this case, for the sine wave, that frequency is omega naught. And its phase angle will be changed by the phase of the transfer function. Meaning, this is now what our sinusoidal steady state result would be at the output if we injected an input that was a pure sine wave at a frequency of omega naught. The input would be scaled, the input's magnitude would be scaled in the output by whatever the system does at omega naught in terms of how strongly or weakly adjusted that particular signal is at that frequency, and it also will impact the phase angle of that particular signal by the angle of H at J omega naught. If we generalize what we just talked about in terms of if we had one sine wave, we know what's going to be at the output in the sinusoidal steady state. What if we put a bunch of sine waves in, or we combined several sinusoids in the linear system? If it's a linear system, we know that we have superposition, or superposition now allows us to look at each of those separate individual inputs by, the, by itself, and that allows us then to find the sinusoidal state, steady state due to the first input, x sub 1, the sinusoidal steady state due to, due to the second one, and the sinusoidal steady state due to the third. And then we can simply add those up because it's a linear system. Well, that's what the Fourier series is going to allow us to do. It's actually going to allow us to create a periodic waveform out of a combination of a set of sines and cosines. And now we know, based on the earlier material that we had in this course, how to find sinusoidal steady state output for each of those frequencies. Stating that then, the Fourier series allows us to express a generic non-sinusoidal periodic waveform as a sum. That sum might be infinitely large, but it's going to be a sum of sinusoids. And once we know that we have a collection of sinusoids at the input of the system, then our circuit analysis is going to be pretty straightforward for a generic periodic waveform, where that generic periodic waveform is simply a combination of sines and cosines. Let's just look at trying to get a feel for what that is in terms of what happens when we do combine sinusoids, and we're going to combine sinusoids in a special way. Suppose we just say, let the period of a periodic waveform be one second. Then that gives us a frequency, omega naught, and a frequency, f naught. The fundamental period is one second. The fundamental frequency is the reciprocal of that one second, or one cycle per second, or one hertz. Or, in radian frequency, it's two pi times f naught, or 6.28 radians per second. That's the fundamental period that we will use in this example. Now, here is the collection of special sinusoids. x1 of t is just sine of, remember, this is omega naught. This is now the fundamental frequency. x sub 3. Now we're scaling. This is actually the third harmonic. We are scaling the fundamental frequency, omega naught by 3. That's 3 times omega naught. And we're scaling that sinusoid by 1 over 3. Then we're going to call x sub 5 the special sinusoid that's our fifth harmonic, it's scaled by one-fifth, but again, the fundamental frequency is scaled by a factor of five. 
The next one, X sub 7, is the seventh harmonic, and we could just keep going on and on with this same pattern. What we now want to do is sum those pieces up. We'll call S sub 1 the first sum, or just the fundamental. S sub 3 will be including the fundamental and the third harmonic, or that's just S1 plus X sub 3 which leads us to this pattern, then S sub 5 is going to be S3 plus X5. So this is now the sum of the first five harmonics, X1, X3. Well, this is doubling up my notation. This S sub 5 is now X1 plus X3 plus X5, etc and we'll even go all the way down to S sub 11, meaning let's include all of the odd harmonics up to the 11th. Let's look at some of those pictures. Here's the fundamental waveform, and I'm showing two cycles of that waveform. One period is one second in duration. If we sum the first and third harmonics, then we get this pattern. It's not looking quite as sinusoidal, but that's just a collection of two sine waves, x sub 1 and x sub 3, where they are related in this special way. What if we sum the first five odd harmonics, x sub 1, x sub 3, and x sub 5? Then we're starting to get something that's getting a little bit sharper in terms of its transitions between the high value and the low value. Finally then, if we sum the first 11 harmonics, now if we didn't have all of these bumps, now this is looking very much like a square wave. And in the limit, as we include more and more of these harmonics, we are going to become more and more approximating of that square wave behavior. I finally end up with just showing you the different scaling patterns of the fundamental, the third and the fifth harmonic. The fundamental being in blue, that had a magnitude of one. The third harmonic, we scaled that by one over three. And the fifth harmonic was one over five. And now by adding all of those up, including 7, 9, and 11, we end up with this particular picture. What that shows us then is by adding up sines and cosines, in this particular case, we're just adding up sines, and in fact, we're just adding up the odd harmonics, that allows us to generate a more general or generic periodic waveform which really, if we take it the other way, a generic or general periodic waveform can be represented by an infinite sum of sines and cosines. And as we learned at the beginning of the, this little session, the trigonometric Fourier series is written in this form where we are explicitly identifying sines and cosines and we have coefficients associated with each of those harmonic components of the sine and cosine. Notice that the cosine and sine are made up of the fundamental or an integer multiple. We're now allowing for the possibility of having an infinite number of terms in this Fourier series expansion, but those are just taking integer multiples of the fundamental frequency omega naught. We also allow for the possibility of having an average value in this periodic waveform, meaning we might have a DC offset. And that's going to be then contained in this coefficient or constant A sub B. Again, omega naught is the fundamental frequency. Omega naught is 2 pi F naught or 2 pi over capital T where capital T is the fundamental period of our waveform, which says then that if we can find the time interval of our fundamental wave of our periodic waveform, we can find capital T. Once we have capital T, 
we can produce omega naught, and now we know the structure of our trigonometric Fourier series, we now simply need to calculate the A's and the B's, and that's what we'll do next.